the opera workshop at Hunter College used to meet in the high school auditorium and we would stand outside and listen to the opera singers and we'd imitate them and make funny gestures. They didn't see us, of course, but we got caught. Taken into Professor Turnau and <laughs> as a punishment, he said, okay, you sing for me. And instead of throwing me out on my ears, I well deserved, he said, are you interested in being a singer? She has been one of the really great, gorgeous, beautiful voices. Just unique, you know, there have been very few. If I would hear her voice uh, anywhere, I would know it was Martina, because very unusual, an incredibly sweet quality, even if she was trying to be very, very mean on stage. She had the capability of giving the power, but at the same time, it's delicious, and it just kind of flows. The problem with adjectives, they all present something, but until you hear somebody sing, your emotions don't soar, your heart doesn't open. And with Martina, when you heard her, you didn't think adjectives, you just think you loved it. When I told my father that I wanted to sing in the opera, he was unhappy. He thought it was something like being a can-can girl, until he finally saw an opera on television. He couldn't understand why the fat girl always got the tenor. But he did begin to like it, and my mother fell totally in love with it. Her mother was so down to earth. Absolutely no pretensions. And I think that's where Martina got it from. That wonderful sense of humor and that kind of honesty. I remember one Christmas, my mother had no money, and so she got some bologna and made a gravy and put it over rice and told me that that was a very special holiday dinner. And then she and I put on a recording and we danced and we had a party. Just the two of us. I had no idea we were at poverty level. I think it's that tough personality that got her through it. I mean, she was in the middle of the civil rights movement that was going on with, when Miss Arroyo was becoming this opera star. The general director of the Zurich Opera House, who was very conservative, her professor, Juch, was to come, and he then sent a memo down to the costume shop, and somebody must have told Martina. So Martina went up to Professor Juch's office, and she said, Professor Juch, I understand that you think that when, as Leonora, I go to the convent, you want me to look like Jackie Kennedy when she went to visit the Pope. Well, I can't. I can't look like Jackie Kennedy, but Jackie Kennedy can't sing Leonora. Professor Juch said, well, Mr. Arroyo, there's some people who think that you shouldn't even sing Leonora. And Martina, without batting an eyelash, said, well, Professor Yu, a lot of people think you should run an opera company. <laughs> if they don't want to hear me sing because of my color, then get somebody else. That is your problem. You're the one missing my voice. On the other hand, if you do like me, I'll give you my best. With Martina, everything's about the music, and she'll always bring people back to earth and back to the point that matters. <laughs> 1965 when Birgit Nielsen became ill. The call came in. I thought it was my friends who were always calling saying, oh, you're going to sing at the Met. And he said, would you like to try the Aida? And I realized that it was not a friend joking and I nearly fell on the floor. And I didn't feel badly for Miss Nielsen at all. I thought... <laughs> Something I would tell my students, never do, never leave your character. But I left my character and realized I'm standing on the Met stage with a crown in my hand. And I promise you, my hands were shaking. That crown was moving. I thought it was going to fall on the floor. You always loved her as a colleague. You might have hated her in the story, but you loved to hate her. I liked the idea of being another person, but I only wanted to be the people that I liked. So I love Amelia in Ballo in Mascara and enjoy putting on her skin, as I always call it. The characters that I don't like, I don't go near. Because if I don't like her, if I don't really love her, I can't live her life. The audience loved her because she connect. She was one of the very few of these great spinto sopranos who really cared about the text. She would use the text to motivate the musical line. You gotta keep working. I sang Santa late in my career, but I can't tell you how I fought for the character and sometimes even sacrificed what at one time would never have happened that I sacrificed a tone for, for a word. But there came the point in my life where that word 
really became that important to me. What are you all thinking when this is going on? Can't be thinking the same thing. What is your attitude? She said, okay, now Victoria, you translate his entire aria. And funny enough, the line I couldn't translate was the line where she stopped me. She said, I can tell. You can read it all over your face. She was like, and people can read that in an audience when you really don't know what the other person is saying. The students are so insecure and so vulnerable. And I have a feeling Martina knows how to make them relax. I, of course, was completely intimidated by this, you know, this iconic soprano. But then she'll say something like today. She, she's like, OK, stop. Skiki can't be so sexy. And I, and I just started laughing. I think that the young people today need more coaching more work on the languages, which is why the prelude to performance, not because I thought I was wonderful, but because I thought that I wasn't wonderful and that more could be done so that you could be better prepared. It's unfair to throw a person on stage and think that they're gonna always come up to that level. You don't. She won't let you get away with anything halfway, which is really cool, sometimes frustrating, but really, really great for becoming the best artist you can. This program really encourages you to get into yourself, whereas a conservatory sometimes, you know, you want to regiment everything and you want everything to be perfect. And I don't think we're dealing in perfection here. I think we're dealing in expression. And I think Martina really wants that most of all. I think Martina's legacy is, is this passion she had for her profession. She's giving to all these young people right now. She's just one of those people who gets everybody to really feel that the things that matter in music matter to everybody. I think she should not be shut up in the Smithsonian, but she is certainly a national treasure.